Hey, welcome to People TV's countdown of the best pop culture moments of 2019. I'm Jeremy Parsons. And I'm Andrea Belke. Today, we are going to rank all the pop culture and entertainment events that define this year as voted on by People TV staff. So, joining us today, entertainment journalist and host of People TV's Couch Surfing, Lola Oganaike. And host of EW Morning Live on Sirius XM Radio, also streaming on People TV, Jessica Shaw. Jessica Shaw! Welcome! Hello, <laughs> ladies. Let's start with this. Hard to believe 2019 is almost over. Honestly, this has been one of the fastest, like, fall to winter mm -hmm. seasons of my life, many memories, many moments in pop culture. What are your impressions of the year as you kind of look back, just I, as the flyover impression? Well, for me, this year politically has been so tumultuous. So we you looked think? up, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just a little stuff going on in DC, you know. <laughs> so we've looked to pop culture as like a nece necessary escapism, don't you think, Jessica? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it's been, I feel like it's been a weird pop culture year because in some ways it's the end of an era. I mean, yeah. we're ending the Star Wars trilogy. We ended Thrones. We ended this phase of the MCU with Avengers. Even on TV, Big Bang Theory. Like these, these long-running juggernauts are now over. I do feel like there's this sense of, like you were saying, this need to run to pop culture yes. things yes. in a way that we haven't experienced it before, just to escape the chaos a bit. And That's so for true. that reason, I feel like we're clinging to it more, and we're more. I'm more emotional about it. Maybe it's yeah. the endings, the nostalgia. I get very nostalgic about like last episodes, last movies, last sort of closing events. Well, yeah, for me, everything this year more. More than ever before is online. So if there's a moment you see it on Twitter, on social media, on Instagram, everything is memed, everything is tweeted about, there's a lot of backlash. So it's been interesting kind of breaking all of that down. But that's what's made it so cool because the internet, as we know, is now our water cooler. And because we need so much community now and we need so much levity yes. and we need to laugh, Pop culture has played such a preeminent role in our lives. Yeah. It has been such a year, but behind us is yes. our ranking board. This is very Ooh. exciting. So we're going to be revealing our top That's 10 nice. pop culture moments, <laughs> counting down to our top moment of 2019. Right now, the board's a little sad and lonely, so <laughs> but let's get started. All right, let's do it. So here we go, coming in at number 10, yeah, Fire okay. Festival. It was one of oh. the biggest pop culture this disasters so of 2017 <laughs> and maybe ever, but it wasn't until January of 2019 that fans of real life dumpster fires um, got not one, but two chances to see what exactly went wrong behind the scenes. Hulu and Netflix released dueling documentaries just a week apart. Which doc wore it better? Did we really need two of them? Yes, Ladies, we needed 10 of them. Yeah. The fire At festival least. was such a hot, blaming mess, and I could not get enough of it. Yeah. Did you? I mean, I watched them both, and then I rewatched them both. Back and then I was to like, back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I did and nothing it was that so weekend. So much fun. I mean, every little detail and I feel like you had to watch both right because uh, the whole yes. like, premise of Firefest was everyone wanted to go because of FOMO right. and if you only watched one of the documentaries you felt like you were missing out well, that, was part of the thing. Right. that was part of the thing right Hulu surprise dropped their version uh, two days before mm. the Netflix version came out kind of gave a totally different viewpoint Billy McFarlane the guy sort of the mastermind of the whole thing was at the center of that Hulu doc right. we got one viewpoint there then the Netflix gave us a whole other sensibility almost like the more boots on the ground Step by step, here's what the people were experiencing. Let's just say this. I'm a fan of camping. I don't think it would have been that bad to be on that island. Look. I'm an outdoors no, no, no. guy. Jeremy, you saw the sandwiches, right? No. But I, I can survive. It's just a slice of cheese on You've bread. only been on Survivor. Well, you could survive your pet. I was going to say, I can survive on that. I'm going to survive. But on Survivor, you know what you're signing up for. The whole thing was these people were totally duped. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that sort of became a thread in terms of storylines and talking points yeah. online everywhere else was, hey, it's kind of these like rich, privileged kids that are ending up accidentally in this bad situation. Did that make it easier for people to almost like sneer and snicker at the whole debacle. What do you well, think? Well, I feel like 2019 was the year of schadenfreude. And okay. everyone was looking at these rich people and thinking, you know what, it's time for your comeuppance, it's time for you to come down. And so we see this across pop culture in 2019, but the Fire Festival is one of the first examples of this. As we're weighing this out here <laughs> about the Hulu versus the Netflix, uh -huh. Netflix might have the edge if only for the inclusion of this interview showing how far festival planner Andy King was actually willing to go to get Bahamian Custom to release water for the festival. Oh, Watch. Gosh. And I got into my car to drive across the island to take one for the team. And I got to his office fully prepared to s*** his That is wild, right? Yes. 
That will follow in four months. I mean, I love, four it's the first life. thing that's made yes. everyone on this panel speechless How for at least a second. How far would you go to? Maybe not that far. I guess nothing really encapsulated the desperation of what organizers were feeling as that whole thing unfolded. I joked about it earlier, saying I would go camping, whatever. Like this was a really bad, bad situation, and that really epitomized. But it. listen, yes. if you're going to compare the two documentaries, I have to say that one moment right yes. there with Andy being willing to drop to his knees for some Avion water to me made it that and the Netflix one was the better of the two. Hydration mm -hmm. is important. <laughs> and on that note, we need to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with the ninth biggest pop culture moment of 2019. Stick around. All right, welcome back to People TV's countdown of the 10 biggest pop culture moments of 2019. At number nine, Neo might have been the one in The Matrix, but Keanu Reeves was our number one guy in 2019, appearing in two of the biggest movies of the year, John Wick 3 and Toy Story 4, as well as making waves for his unassuming interviews. We love Keanu Reeves. Was this peak Keanu? Uh, of course it was peak Keanu. <laughs> 2019 was his year, and like, isn't Keanu sort of maybe a good actor, maybe a philosopher, maybe a stoner, maybe yeah. just a normal guy. We don't quite know what he is, but he was in all his glory this year. Even, you know, we don't quite know what he is. We don't. He's, right, right. he's like this enigma of yeah, like actor pop culture yes. phenomenon, he's, right? Like he's he's one of these actors that's now in this in this great sort of phase of the career yes. where they've become such a pop culture icon and they can fully realize it now at yes. this sort of later time. Yeah, I mean, look at him in, in John Wick 3, which yes. made a bazillion dollars. It was amazing. Yeah. I mean, he's like him and his dog. You're just obsessed with them. <laughs> he's playing with puppies. And the absurd going violence. Crazy. And absurd violence. Right. Absurd exactly. violence. And then you see he's him, a killer with a heart. Yeah. He is. <laughs> you see him in Always Be My Maybe, oh. which is like the best. Yes. I loved him so much. I loved Toy him Story. In he's, in, he's in everything. Yes. And he's just Delightful in an interview. His interview on Stephen Colbert, oh. where he's asked about death, is one of the most iconic moments of a talk show this year. Because not on your show. Because yeah, what does yeah, he say? Yeah, he says that you. he knows that people will miss him yes. when he's gone. Yeah. I know it's very sweet. Something I like about him too, if you notice in pictures, he never touches people. He doesn't touch women when he. I don't know if he doesn't like to touch or he's just being very careful. Yeah. Right. But all of his pictures, he's smiling right. and his hands are just like this. He's very, just making it very good. clear. And people are really happy for him this year because he just debuted his relationship with mm -hmm. Alexandra Grant. Yes. And they seem really happy together. Yeah. She's and she's in, age appropriate. Yes. Yeah, well, right? The internet was so confused. They were like, oh, wait, I'm sorry. Are you not dating someone one third your age? I know. <laughs> I will point out. She they still also is. thought she was Dame Helen Mirren. Yes. And I'm yeah. like, well, just yes. because a 40 year old woman has silver hair, does yep. that make yeah. her Dame <laughs> Helen Mirren? It's funny because she still is nine years younger. He's 55, she's 46. Right. But in a day where we're talking about people in their 60s dating girls that are in college, yes. Yes. it's just nice to see a relationship like this. Yeah. And I love that he's in a relationship, I have to say. But of course, Keanu didn't even realized that he was also the internet's boyfriend. <laughs> oh, right. Here he is finding out for the first time on People TV's red carpet for Toy Story 4. And now you've been dubbed the internet's boyfriend. How do we feel about that? I've been what? You've been dubbed the internet's boyfriend. Everyone is just kind of gushing over you on the internet. You didn't know that yet. No, well that's uh... <laughs> <laughs> a lot that's of positivity. Wacky. That's wacky. I mean, he somehow made the term like "that's wacky" sound adorable yeah, and right. endearing. Yeah. But of course, he doesn't Google himself, right? No, I, I, I honestly, he feels like one of those stars that absolutely has zero interest in right. googling himself. He's like doing his thing, living his life, living in the glow of a great career and continuing. Like you said, there's more of him to come for in 2020. And yes, I think we're all definitely. Looking forward to that. All right, while Keanu stole our hearts this year, breaking hearts was the job of ABC's The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. <laughs> At number eight on our list, the show's 23rd season proved that love can't be fenced in. <laughs> Colton. He just jumped the f fence. The moment we were finally waiting for. Can anything top this moment, Jessica? No, they teased this from like the very first episode yeah. and it was like, why is he jumping the fence? And of course, Chris Harrison is so perfect. Everyone true. was wondering why he was doing it. The reason was he was chasing after Cassie. So yes. he chose Cassie. She said, I don't know if I love you the way you love me. Maybe you should find someone else. He went after her. He jumped that fence and he actually won her back, which I thought was a little controversial because when a woman says, no, I don't want this, are you supposed to chase after her? But for him, it works. Yeah, I guess like if you're the 
Bachelor. Yeah, in the yeah, context like, of The Bachelor, yes. I think all rules are kind yeah, of true, off. Right? It's like this yeah. strange, bizarre world. We saw back to back drama. Hannah's season of The Bachelorette followed Colton's, and People Magazine played a pivotal role in revealing a huge lie behind the scenes. So take a look at this. Okay. And then a few weeks later, I get news that there was a People Magazine article that was out, and I start reading it, and it was not the same story that I was told. So people broke this story. Okay. Basically, Hannah chose this guy, Jed. Okay. He's a country singer in Nashville. Aspiring. But it turns yes. out <laughs> like that he had a girlfriend. Aspiring. He was dating this girl, Haley Stevens, also a country artist in Nashville, and they've been dating for four months, and he went on The Bachelorette and didn't tell Hannah, <gasps> so she chose him. And then this all comes out because Haley came forward with her truth. And but yeah, it's kind of saying that he had told her, like, hey, I'm just doing this for the fame. Yeah. Yes. And by the way, his songs suck. <laughs> yeah. It's not great. But then Jed tried to backpedal and be like, well, we weren't really official. We didn't have a label. But they went on a trip together. They said, I love you to each other. Now that there have been so many scandalous finales, especially of The Bachelorette, mm -hmm. I feel like if there's just a normal relationship with two people who fall in love, we're going to be like, oh, that's a letdown. And looking forward to next season, I got to sit down mm -hmm. with Hannah and ask her about who she thinks would be the next Bachelor. If you had to choose between Peter the Pilot for Next Bachelor or Big Mike, who are you going with? Oh, that's so hard because they're totally different mm -hmm. and it would be totally different seasons. But I know that Peter was able to be really vulnerable with his emotions and really, really love me. What do you think of Peter the Pilot being the Next Bachelor? Fine. He's 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 handsome. He's a little boring. Okay, like, windmill is, gate. That having took sex him in to a the windmill four level. times is boring. <laughs> I'm sure that was super Wait, fun. That I, oh, oh yeah, total well, windmill well, sex. Some, like, so much windmill sex, and you can rent the windmill on Airbnb. All right. <laughs> well, you can. Yes, you that's totally insane. Can. All right. Stay tuned to People TV's top pop culture moments of 2019. We'll be right back with number seven. <laughs> All right, welcome back, everyone. We are three down on our top 10 list of best pop culture moments of 2019. At number seven, this year's Oscar ceremony standout was this deep performance of Shallow by Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. Lola, every year there is talk of kind of getting rid of the live musical performances in the Oscars. Why do they do this to us? I don't know. But what do you think this performance did to kind of ensure that we would continue having live music on the Oscars? Uh, because it was the hottest thing that's been on television the entire year. It was four <laughs> minutes of foreplay, and I was here for all of it. I think it, it went beyond <laughs> foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. It really is something to see, and especially we were just earlier talking about The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, right. and how this is all about love and reality TV. Mm -hmm. That moment seems so genuine, even in a world that's saturated by you know reality romance. That seems so genuine between two people. It was just it was electric. I feel like we all collectively lit a cigarette after. <laughs> yes. that. I gasped. Yes. I'm like, oh, they're gonna kiss. They're gonna kiss. They're gonna kiss. I mean, woo! Shallow, Looking back shallow. at the little cornier that I have remembered, though. A little, little cornier in the flashback. But at the moment, we were absolutely in. Fully in. Oh, <laughs> my God. And it was just like, Twitter was like going crazy. Like, what is happening? Yeah. Okay, but honestly, do you think there was something going on between them? No, I actually don't. I no. believe Gaga when she says that, listen, I'm an actress. Bradley's an actor. He's an Oscar-nominated actor and director. What we did on there was not the real deal. But let's hear from Gaga from her own words. People saw love, and guess what? That's what we wanted you to see. Yes. You know, I mean, this is, this is a love song, Shallow. I'm an artist, <laughs> and I guess we did a good job, and full yeah. job. Oh, yeah, yeah. We did a very good job. They clearly job. loved each other yes. very much. I agree with you. I don't think that there was necessarily anything going on between them. I think there was a real soul connection. Right. I think he directed her in a performance, in an Oscar-worthy performance. What you saw there was, I think, more of an outpouring of gratitude. Yeah. This one person, as she said on every red carpet leading up to that film. Every single one. one oh, person yeah. 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 in you. Yeah. Yeah. Bradley Cooper was the <laughs> one person who yeah. believed in her. And there on that stage, you just saw gushing gratitude. Yeah. Anyone that follows Gaga and her music knows she is passionate, she's able to be authentic, that's why she attracts her audience okay. so much. She is truly who she is and she knows how to kind of tap into that in a way that I think a lot of entertainers don't necessarily know how to do. And when it came to acting and then this live performance, that's her wheelhouse, to be on a stage in front of an audience yes. and put it out there in the most real way possible. All right, well, for some moviegoers, Gaga and Cooper were a great team up. For others, the ultimate team up was literally every single character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That is right, number six on our list is Avengers Endgame. Jessica, 
I mean, it's it's actually hard to overstate what an epic moment this was. Mm -hmm. For you, though, think about this. Ten years ago or so, would you have imagined that this moment would come when you think about that first Iron Man movie coming out? I know, out? back in 2008. Iron Man was just this, like, I mean, he was a cool character, but he wasn't, it, it wasn't this massive thing. It wasn't, like, Spidey or Superman yeah. or Batman. Yeah. And Robert Downey Jr. turned in this performance that that really launched the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, on a whole other path. It was huge. I have to say... With this movie, which, I mean, there are 22 Marvel movies now in, in this phase that is now over, they managed to give eight bazillion characters their own time, which was pretty amazing when you think about how much they had to pack into this movie, which is under three hours by like a second, but they <laughs> managed to really give everyone a storyline, an emotional storyline, mm -hmm. and an action storyline. Yeah. And I really like that the writers also listened to crew members. I thought this was a really cool story. So the scene where Black Widow, spoiler alert, I mean by now hopefully okay, you've seen time it. To see I mean, it. Black Widow goes off the cliff. <laughs> the writers actually wrote another scene where Hawkeye was the person going off the cliff and they actually asked the female crew members who they thought should go off the cliff and the female crew member said, no, give this to Black Widow. She deserves this death. Like mm -hmm. this is her don't take mm -hmm. it away from her. No discussion of this movie is possible without talking about its biggest change to the MCU. And if you are one of the three people left who has not seen <laughs> Endgame, here is our obligatory spoiler warning to this heartbreaking scene. Just I'm guessing you were satisfied with this ending. Oh my god, of course. It was devastating. I was like, why am I crying in a Marvel movie? This <laughs> yeah. is so emotional. No, but that's honestly, it's it's funny to say, but truly, these movies do have the full range of emotion. They give you chills for the excitement, they give you chills for like the trauma, yeah. the drama, the death, all of that. And just watching the evolution of that one character going from being this brash, annoying billionaire to this person who is willing willing to sacrifice it all to save the world. And just the Incredible. mentor, a mentor to Spidey. Right. And like he was just, he was so great and he went out in the best way yes. possible. <laughs> we know um, that Robert Downey Jr. also ad-libbed that now legendary line. I feel like one of the most iconic lines in film history. I mean, it was one of the great, great moments. When I saw this Chills. in theaters, the room erupted oh, yeah. to cheers. People were like, yes! And it was one of those moments where you're like, this is why I go to the movies. How could Scorsese criticize a movie <laughs> genre that has given us such incredible discussion here today? All right, when we come back, our top five pop culture moments of the year. All right, welcome back everyone. We're counting down the top 10 pop culture moments of 2019, and we've made it to the top five with their second World Cup of the decade. Woo! Here's the US women's soccer team. That's it, US wins their fourth World Cup. This was such an uplifting Don't moment for everyone. Now. I'm covered in goosebumps. Yeah, so just, you know, besides the big win, why was this such a special moment, especially for people to rally behind this team, Lola? Because they were winners on the field and off the field. They were fighters on the field and off the field. These women are true examples of what it means to live your life as a hero. Not to be a hero in a moment, but to live your life as a hero. Megan Rapino. The words that she said advocating for the LGBTQ community, the marginalized people, people of color, women, she's been remarkable and her teammates have rallied around her as well. So just watching them has been incredibly inspiring both to women and to men, to young girls and to young boys. Mm -hmm. These women to me are true American heroes. It was one of those great moments also of like, I mean, I watched it near where I lived. Right. Every bar, every sports bar was packed. You couldn't even get in. And it just felt like as a country, we were all all watching this right. one thing. I felt so proud to be American, which I think a lot of people have conflicted feelings, like right. you talked about. It's, it's a tumultuous time in our country right now. I was so proud mm -hmm. watching her, and there were people from 
all over this country who were just like loving eating this up every second, cheering for our sure. team. It was and amazing. All over the world. At one point, you looked in some of the stands at these games, and the people from the respective home teams seemed to be rooting, rooting for, for the, the American team. Yeah. 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 And so you know that around the world, they're invested in America's success, and these women are emblematic of America's success. They, they definitely are. And one thing that I love in terms of just if you're someone that is following global soccer, right. and the U.S. has been trying to continues to try to make soccer more of a of a valid sport here. It's a valid sport, but a huge sport here in competition with the other big leagues that exist. It's really interesting that the women's team is what brought this huge highlight moment, brought the nation together on a, the world stage, yep. all this attention to increase enthusiasm, which opened up this whole other conversation about the women's team versus the men's team. And then the, the gender, the pay, role, the pay disparity yep. between yep. genders and, and all of that Jeremy, became a real talking that's point. That's true. And you bring up a good point because these women understood that they had the spotlight on them and they used it. They used it to talk about issues that were really important to them. Videos like this one of the crowd chanting for each Equal pay went viral because of these ladies. Isn't it crazy Equal though? Pay. In 2019, we're still Equal fighting pay. these issues. Oh yeah, I mean, crazy, sad, but yeah. but so predictable. I think the reason it's on this list is because it became a moment that was so much bigger than soccer that played into all the conversations that, that have been happening and, and socially and in Jeremy, our country. It's interesting because historically we've heard people say leave sports and politics alone. But sports and politics have always been linked. I mean, if you look at Jesse Owens standing up to Hitler, Muhammad Ali saying no to fighting in Vietnam, Colin Kaepernick with football, mm -hmm. Megan Rapino and these women brought injected politics into the sport and used their platform to address issues that were really important. That was a great one. Continuing though with our list of top pop culture moments of 2019. Number four is gonna take you down the Old Town Road. <laughs> Here we go, Lola. let's talk about this. Can we officially name this, I guess the song of the summer, the song of the year, the song of the decade, huge. It's one of those earworms that dug a hole in your brain and has taken up residence and lived in my head ever since. I'm, I'm a I sucker mean, for earworms and I usually get irritated. <laughs> this one has irritated me so much less than most that get stuck in because my head. it's catchy and it's, it's a good so song. It's so fun. And he's so, so brilliant because he brought so many people on, all these iterations, Billy Ray Cyrus, was right. the first, then you had Diplo, then Young Thud, Mason Ramsey, yes. and then RM from BTS. So yes. yeah, these brilliant collaborations, which kind of made this song fresh and new every time you heard it. And one of the great things about social media, and we always talk about the bad things about social media, but one of the great things about social media is that you can get at anyone. So I mean, Lil Nas X reached out to Billy Ray Cyrus, asked the Twitter universe to help him get Billy Ray Cyrus on the track, and it actually worked. Yeah, Billy Ray it had, actually worked. Billy Ray talked about how after when he they first kind of came to him with it, he listened to it, he responded back, but he even said like, "Hey, I'm not sure what I can add to it." But then they worked it out. Part of the impetus for that was the original version of the song ended up controversially being dropped from the Billboard Hot Country right. uh, yep. list, the top 100. And so then he brought Billy Ray in for that remix, got it back in those country charts, and of course, then it ended up being number one historically on the Billboard Hot 100. It just stayed there for and lived there. Forever. Nine Yes, 19 weeks. weeks. Also, there was that the big moment when Lil Nas X came out publicly sure uh, during Pride Month. That was obviously something that became this huge moment that I think propelled the song to stay in the forefront even longer. Mm -hmm. And then he had this, obviously the backlash, but then a lot of celebrities rallied around him and praised him for coming out. He ended up making history in terms of being nominated for the CMA, a CMA award winning, uh, and also nominated for Grammy, the first openly gay artist um, to be a, a rap artist to be nominated for the Grammy. Grammys, right. country artist for the CMA. It's yeah. incredible how he's kind of in this spot where he's hitting all of these different pockets in a historic way. And the interesting thing is that he came out at the height of his career. Usually people stay in the closet because they're concerned about whether or not this will negatively impact their career. He made it a point to say that he wanted to come out at the height of his career so other kids who may have felt uncomfortable with their sexuality could look to him as a, an example. And his first big wave. In his first big wave. It was and so he spoke moving. about this on HBO's The Shop with uh, Kevin Hart. Take a look at this. He said he was gay, so what? I'm grown, I'm growing up to hate this shit. I'm not supposed to Grown ever to hate like what? this. Hate what? Hate what? Homosexuality, gay Why? people. Come on now. Why are you going to If you're really it? from the hood, you know. You yeah, so that really, uh, it, it kind of took that conversation. And, and look, it, it created these 
opportunities for a lot of people to join in on it in terms of moving the needle for a lot of communities. That's true. And one of the great things, again, about pop culture is that you can use a song that seems frivolous on the surface to get you to a point where you're talking about something so substantial and meaningful. It's wonderful. Yeah. I just love that he tweeted, dead ass, I thought it was obvious. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my I favorite mean, part that line <laughs> green outfit, he wore the American Music Awards. I was like, boo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, All right, guys, we got to move on. We come back. We finally oh, we can't made talk it. about that, Jeremy? No, we can't make comment that. We made it to the top three, everybody. Which pop culture moments will take the top spots? Stay with us and find out. Welcome back to the show. 2019 was a banner year for the royal family. But there was one event that took the crown for our list of top pop culture moments. At number three, the birth of Archie Harrison, Mountbatten, Windsor. Megan and myself had a baby boy um, early this morning, a very healthy boy. I'm so incredibly proud of my wife, um, and as every father and parent would ever say, you know, your, your baby is absolutely amazing, but this little thing is, is, is absolutely to die for, so I'm just over the moon. So baby oh. Archie arrived May 6th, 2019. Taurus, just like me. There you sure go. We're going to share a lot of the same you guys personality the same person. traits. <laughs> what do you think of the name, first of all? Because it was surprising. I loved it. I mean, there were all these people like, what, what kind of royal name is it going to be? And there were like odds makers in Vegas. I love the name Archie. I was confused because <laughs> I thought that Archie was a nickname, like a shortened name for not Archibald, Archibald and right? It. And they were like, absolutely not. So it would be like naming your child Frankie or naming your child Tommy. Yeah. Archie. Yeah, people I, were, people were betting Archie's on Archie's his it. legal name. We talked about this a lot. Well, I'll just say this. I did not like it at the beginning. Oh. No, I didn't. It came, I was like, what were they thinking? Was this like a celebrity moment of like going off the <laughs> rails with some name? I absolutely love it now. I'm not. We do this what on the happened? royal record what on people changed? now. We How talk did about it grow on you? familiarity. It's cute. We started seeing. Look, we started seeing baby Archie, and now it's just like baby Archie. It's I a know, thing, and it's so super. Cute. They knew. Megan knew, but and can Harry you be knew a seventy-year-old Archie? Yeah, I well, think but, you can, but, right? But, right? <laughs> well, I mean, but you could say that for a lot of trendy modern names. Here's the thing: one thing that that Harry and Megan have made a point of is to kind of pave the, their own way yes. and and blaze their own trail. Yes. They're kind of being a little less traditional here with the name Archie. The other names, though, like Mountbatten, is a family name. They're, they're, yes. They have historical roots in other ways, so they're kind of hitting all the boxes they need to hit and doing it in their own way. Harry and Megan are bucking royal tradition, right? Yes. So. For his christening, it was a lot different than in the past. It was really small in a private chapel. There were only 30 people there. The queen wasn't even there. And a lot of the people, the taxpayers, weren't really allowed to see into this. And that's caused quite the stir. Because, and we you know, know that Harry Buck tradition marrying Megan. I mean, mm -hmm. she's yeah. a divorcee. She was an actress. She was a commoner. She was half black. So, I mean, he bucked all the tradition when he brought her home. We know exactly what we're going to get so often with the royal family. And there's always, there's like something a little different with the two of them. Yeah. Uh, I know, but I hate that she's getting different. so much backlash. And negative press in the UK, I feel like it's very unfair, right? Yeah, well, the, the British press is, is crazy, and Harry has come out and defended Meghan and been like, stop being mean to my wife. Yeah. Yes. Well, Harry has done that. Or you know, I'll move to South Africa. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right. Well, I, I think they are doing, in, in some ways, it's kind of like you feel for them because they, in, in some ways, are going over and beyond to be out there, be front-facing for the public. They do their moments. Also on social media, they've been very active, more so than royals in the past. Yeah. They even announced the, the birth announcement. Something was up yeah. on social media, they on Instagram on first, so on Instagram. before the, the sort of scroll was put out for the public. So I think they are making efforts to, to be front-facing to the public. And so they have less tolerance probably for being mistreated by the press. I well, think the one yeah. thing that drives me nuts though is the Meghan versus Kate. I was that just everyone say that. wants to just pit these two yeah, women against sure. each other. Like, God forbid there can be like two women in the royal family who get along or yeah. who are fine with each other. Or have I mean, two, yeah. two queens they're, they're, right they're, here well, on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> and it's working and out. We get yeah. along. Well, also yeah. just kind of going back to the basic facts of any, okay, two brothers, they marry women, you they have their own lives. The like, <laughs> you can have little disagreements here and there living in the same, like move into your own house. It's fine. Yeah, Go it's to Windsor, it's okay. And we love little Archie, so we'll be tracking along. All right, stay right there because we'll be right back with our top to <laughs> pop culture moments of 2019. Hey everyone, we are almost at the end of our list of top pop culture moments of 2019, but before we reveal number one, our second biggest pop culture moment has left a dragon-sized hole in our hearts. <laughs> the end of Game of Thrones. Take a moment of silence. There it is. <laughs> Jessica, one of the most anticipated finales ever in TV history. 
uh, I'm going to dare ask, did it live up to the hype? Now nope. that you have had some distance from it. Nope. Okay. You're no, sticking with no, that. no. I don't know anyone who thinks that the finale or even the last season in general lived up to the hype. We were all so excited for this. We knew the, creator of the sh uh, creators of the show went kind of off book that George R. R. Martin had not written this ending yet. Turns out they should have let him write it. <laughs> In it was opinion. a bummer of an ending, especially for those of us who it put in so many hours watching I, this show. It was like, what? How do you just whiff that ending? I was, yeah, I was f fully caught up for this season. And I was so excited and then just completely let down. I just felt like all the storylines were really rushed. Characters were doing thing that, things that didn't even make sense to it's their true. entire arc so far. It was really disappointing. Episode three was so dark. Like you couldn't but even you see can't what even was going see. on. You're like adjusting your TV. I'm like, that was like the wildest thing to come out of why it, that did, whole dark why, episode. How it, weird was that? That yes. dark episode, you couldn't see that episode. The pacing for the entire season was off. Why did you have to rush it? I could right. have taken 10 episodes for the final season. Mm -hmm. It didn't have to be truncated into six. And you're right, Andrea. Like, what were people doing? Brienne of Tarth having sex with uh, Jamie and then no. crying when he leaves? Uh, no. She's, a, she's our hero. She's our hero. She's our hero. No, and it was so they sad because for her to making, leave is like a damsel in distress. Yes, when she was this badass yes, knight, she was even you. knighted. Especially for a show that had so many problems with women in right. general. You I can't believe yeah. she's a crying girl like, oh, Jamie, oh, please, Jamie. Jamie. <laughs> it was, it was so much, yeah. Jamie. It was honestly depressing. I mean, come that on. scene that was my least ridiculous. favorite scene of the oh, entire show. Oh, Danny into a homicidal dragon riding in, maniac. In two seconds. Like, also, what? it was like, she's great, great, great season after yeah. season. And then all of a sudden, this she is like, soul. And then yeah. she's like, I'm pissed. <laughs> after this many seasons, the way they ended this show with who ends up on the throne. Oh. So many fans <laughs> and even casual viewers just wanted to know who would win the Game of Thrones. You, you know what one of my favorite parts about the this show is? show is called Game of Thrones. Could we possibly have gotten a less compelling ending than this? There's nothing in the world more powerful than a good story. And who has a better story than Bran the Broken? Like, who has a better story? Let's think. Uh, Tyrion, <laughs> Literally everyone. Cersei, Sansa, Danny, Arya, Sansa, 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 Arya, the dragon, I mean, the Night King. Like, like everybody, literally everyone. Literally everyone has a better story than him. Bring back Hodor from the dead. Like, I'll take anyone. The one compelling argument that I will take from them is that we were just tired. Like, we gave everything that we had. And in the final season, we were running on fumes, and we didn't know how to wrap this thing up. Well, right. I mean, I, okay, if I honestly that, but... said that, then I would take that, and I would allow them to do a duo. Well, OK, fine. But let me just say this. I, th that was a thought I would allow initially. Was like, we can't afford it. There was a thought of like, OK, who could live up to this hype? But then you think about a show like Breaking Bad. There, at the moment, there yes. was nothing bigger than the hype for the finale of Breaking right. Bad, and they nailed it. And yeah, there delivered. was, of course, some thought. There's always backlash. But overall, people were like, all right, it wrapped up and I'm happy. So it's possible to do it, especially when there's so much at stake. I will say there was one moment of the finale that I thought was really good, and that was that final confrontation between Danny and Jon oh, Snow. Let's watch this. Okay. I don't know. I don't even. Kills her. I know. <laughs> big fan of Jon Snow. I mean, he should have stayed dead back oh. in the day. Ooh, I know, hot that's take, hot take. <laughs> coming in. So I wasn't the biggest fan of that scene. Yeah. But. It's a great moment. It just, and I really do love that moment. It just wasn't earned it wasn't. as much. Like, okay. it was a moment, a standalone moment yeah. that was great. But God, if we had just seen Danny go just like, like 10% more right. cuckoo in the earlier seasons, yeah. it would have worked so much better. Yeah. Also, the idea that Danny would not see that coming is also deeply problematic for me. I mean, she had spent the entire season being this cunning woman, and all of a sudden, when your, your lover nephew rolls up on you and gives you a long, lingering kiss like That's that, right. you don't think she would have seen a knife coming? Mm -mm. Well, she didn't <laughs> see a Starbucks cup coming. <laughs> oh, yeah, Because right. we all went nuts. All of a sudden, you're watching an episode of Game of Thrones and that infamous moment the Starbucks cup on the table. Well, and that's why it just how seems unfair happen? to the fans, because how did this get past a bunch of eyes? I think they did it right? on purpose. Well, the, the thing specific, well, that specific incident, maybe whatever, but it indicated to fans, oh, they're phoning it in. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right? I think that, they and then that there was the water purpose. bottles. Or they were like, you know what? The plots are so bad this season. Let's just like throw everyone off with like a water bottle and <laughs> the Starbucks. Give them stuff. something else yeah. to talk about yeah, to yeah. keep us relevant. Talking points. I, I, yeah, talking I think that was sure. product placement. I think <laughs> they did it on purpose. <laughs> no. I don't think it so. It. it completely I think, ruined it. Yeah, it took no, us off. I, 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 yes. I genuinely believe that because you know that there are people whose entire job is to make sure there's continuity. Yes. And the fact that a Starbucks cup made it into that episode. They were like, no, 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 no. We, I we don't it buy in. it. All right, out of time for <laughs> this one. The same way I don't buy that ending with Danny. Nobody's gonna be happy about this one. All right, <laughs> we're gonna be right back with our very top number one moments of 2019. Stick around. All right, welcome back. We've been spending the show counting down the top pop culture moments of 2019 just to refresh you on the list so far. Here we go. At number 10, we had Netflix and Hulu's competing Fire Festival documentaries. Number nine is Keanu Reeves' most excellent year. Eight is all of this year's Bachelor bombshell moments. Coming in at number seven is Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga's performance of Shallow at the Oscars. Six, Avengers Endgame and the end of this phase of the MCU. At five, the U.S. women's soccer team's World Cup victory. At four, Old Town Road. Number three, the birth and naming of Harry and Meghan's Archie. And number two was the final season of Game of Thrones. All right, now before we get to number one, was there any pop culture moments you feel deserve honorable mention that we haven't covered? Lola, let's start with you. Um, it has to be Fleabag. Ugh. I'm obsessed with Phoebe Waller-Bridge. She won every major award at the Emmys. The world knows just how talented she is now. And just in case you don't watch Fleabag, I don't know if you're living under a rock, she also writes Killing Eve. She also just landed a $20 million deal with Amazon. And she also is just helping tweak the script for James Bond, that little <laughs> franchise you may have heard of. I'm yeah. so sad though. 2019 was her yeah. year. Yeah. I'm so sad though. There's not going to be a third season of Fleabag. I'm no, begging. I'm, I'm desperate. I totally disagree. No. I don't want it. It ended so, so perfectly. Perfectly. Yeah. Also, two words, hot priest. I, I was just going to say, <laughs> yeah. Oof, that moment I mean, when he told her to kneel in the church, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. It's like, woo, woo. Just yeah. watch yours. I think mine was a little different. Um, <laughs> sorry. I have to compose myself. Okay. I think it was the Apple Plus and Disney Plus launching within weeks of okay, each yeah. other. It just felt like well, here we had Netflix, we had Hulu, Amazon. There were so many things that we already were committed to. Right. And then these two other things, we have Mandalorian, we have Baby Yoda, we have the morning show, which is like a real love and hate it situation. Right. But it's just like give up on ever being caught up on television. No, the, the fact that they broke through with those was amazing. Yeah. It really was. What about for you? Oh, gosh, Kardashians. I mean, People Magazine were always covering the Kardashians. When Khloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson and Jordan Woods had this whole cheating <laughs> scandal, this love triangle, this was so dramatic and I felt so bad for Khloe. So she was dating Tristan, right? And then he was spotted at a party with Jordan Woods, who's Kylie Jenner's best friend. Kylie Jenner and Khloe Kardashian are sisters. And they kissed. Apparently she was kind of all over him. Jordan Woods then said, you know, on Red Table Talk that it wasn't what it's, you know, what it seemed like it was. However, there was, they, there was a kiss. Yeah. And the whole family kind of blew up on Twitter. And now, you know, Jordan Woods moved out of Kylie's home. Yeah. They're no longer friends. Tristan and Chloe are no longer together, but they have this baby true Kardashian, which I think is one of the so cutest cute. Kardashians. So adorable, the cutest yeah. cheeks ever. But it was a lot of drama, and we kind of followed along with all of that. You got that. You I got know. all I of know, those that was, points, that and that was, was really awesome. incredible. I needed, I needed a, a, a chart. Like, a chart. All yeah. All right, so my uh, final thing that I think should belong in its own category, it would be hard not to mention Luke Perry's death, oh, which I know is a sad note to end on, but 52 years old, it was such a, a moment of shock for so many people. It hit sort of this multi-generational thing, right? With the Beverly Hills 90210 audience, also Riverdale and everything he's doing there. So a lot of young people were affected by this. People that are a little older that remember him originally from 90210 were affected. And then you saw this outpouring from all the different cast members, all these stars that knew him personally that really were affected by it. It just, to me, that moment ended up reverberating in a really special, unique way and went further than I anticipated it would go. Mm -hmm. it, everyone in Hollywood felt the loss there. And it was mm -hmm. nice to see him in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, so that was nice. A nice yeah, kind, kind of a final of Dakota, uh, yeah. final bow for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, we're gonna take one last break, and when we return, we'll reveal our top pop culture moment of the year.
Welcome back. It's been a difficult bunch to pare down this year, but there was one pop culture moment that topped most of our staff's list this year. On March 12th, 2019, federal prosecutors charged 50 people, including beloved celebrities like Lori Loughlin and Felicity Huffman, with using money to influence admissions at top universities in an operation that was nicknamed Varsity Blues. The scandal that ensued has resulted in our biggest pop culture moment of 2019. So why this story? What about seeing the rich and famous exposed like this has really grabbed all of our attention. I'll start it by saying, I think Lori Loughlin in many ways was the most unlikely suspect, right? Literally so beloved from Full House and Fuller House and then everything else she's doing with these feel good movies and things. That for me was the biggest shocker. No one could believe that Aunt Becky was involved in something so slimy and, and dubious and nefarious. Yeah. Exactly. I love that. Allegedly. Word. Yes. Well, allegedly. <laughs> Felicity no Huffman. one believed that she had children who rode. No. <laughs> well, that's the craziest that's the thing. thing. $500,000 to get her kids, you know, recruited to the USC crew team. They weren't a part of crew at all. It was ridiculous. And so her two daughters were there. Um, Olivia, Olivia Jade, Jade yeah. and yeah. Bella and the funniest thing was that you know they both were kind of bloggers and I think it was Olivia Jade had YouTube videos where she said yeah I don't know how much school I'm actually gonna go to which oh. then in light of all this that became a real moment of people having backlash over that look you got in apparently allegedly from cheating right. or your parents cheated for you and then you're not even grateful for the opportunity to be at such a great and school and I think Jeremy you hit it on the head what made this scandal one that really blew up is that it was one that we could all understand it was so egregious and the rules were so flouted everyone was invested in this you lied and said your kids rode you paid people half a million dollars to get your kid into this school we can all agree that that's wrong Allegedly. given all the political Allegedly. well given all the political <laughs> scandals that have gone on over mm -hmm. the course of this year we can't quite put our finger on what happened what exactly happened people are very clear about what happened yeah. here and a number of people have already pled guilty the only one who hasn't pled guilty yet who of note is Lori. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Felicity Huffman, she pled guilty. She owned it immediately. She and was like, she served 10 time. Grand. She served time. She got out early, which is like, okay. <laughs> okay. Celebrity is like. It was already a short sentence. Yeah, exactly. got out early there. Good exactly. behavior in 10 days. Yeah. Uh, but, but seeing but, her in the like prison garb, I mean, yeah. with the pictures emerging from jail of her in that prison uniform, not good. Well, you know what? Not we were good. saying this about Felicity Huffman. She's going to basically be wrapped up with this whole thing and moving on by the time this whole process kind of engages for Lori yes. Lachlan and Massimo Gianni newly. Mm -hmm. There's so much at stake there. Another sentence has already come down for someone else involved in this. Right. And it was the, mo the most uh, intense sentence yet yes. with prison time. And it was a very similar charge to what they are being charged with. Again, charged, because they've upped the charges Because they've now. upped the charge, they've yeah. added a new one. And we've heard from people surrounding them that that new charge, the newest one, really took a blow to their uh, sense of their emotional well-being. Right. And it really feels like it's weighing heavy on them. We actually recently spoke with Lori Lachlan's Fuller House co-star, Andrea Barber, about Lori Lori's absence from that final season of Fuller House and how she's doing now. Take a look. It was really sad and we could feel her absence and it just felt like there was a hole in the in the whole season, but also um, in that final episode, she should have been there and yeah. I'm, I'm sorry that she wasn't. Do you know how she's doing now? Have you talked recently? Um, I, yeah, I have and um, she's, she's doing great. She's doing as good as possible and um, yeah. Sources have said that they're not doing the best right now. No. They're really stressed right now. I'm curious, do you think that Felicity Huffman or Lori Loughlin will ever work again as actresses? Felicity will. You yes. think so? I definitely think I so. Agree because with you. she owned it. First of all, it was just 10000 not right. that 15. Ten, or 15000 yeah. you know, but it wasn't half a million dollars. Right, right. And it was she, only one daughter, not two. Right. Yeah. yeah. And she said, you know, I did this. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm serving my time. And I think she'll be forgiven. Also, the way she handled all the ancillary events, she wasn't signing autographs in front of the courtroom right. like Lori. Lori. She wasn't on going on some media tour like Lori. I mean, Felicity kept her head down, got into court early, pled guilty, I, served her time, yep. and got out. And I she wants to move on with her life. And I think people will allow her to do that. Maybe that initial phase for, for Lori was sort of, uh, hey, just keep a positive outlook. I didn't, it, sort of creating this image that she wasn't sure how severe the things were. And I think she's even been quoted as saying that she didn't realize the severity of what was happening. And a lot of people have sort of, at least in casual conversations, likened this to, oh, why didn't you just donate to build a new student union? Things right. like that happen all the time. So it's a whole other thread of this story that a lot of people could relate to. People make donations to universities and through different channels all the time, and it seems like that would have been a better way to go about this. What do you think? I but don't know. the thing that's so interesting about this story is that for all the people out there who feel like the game is rigged against people who aren't rich, and they feel like there's two justice systems, one for the rich and one for the rest of us, 
looking at this scandal makes people think, oh, there may be some validity to that idea. There yeah. may be some validity to the argument that the wealthy can get away with murder and the rest of us would have to do time for things that are significantly smaller in the grand sch scheme of yeah. things. Yeah, obviously this was way more about the parents than the kids. A lot of the kids didn't even know what was going on. It really shows how much they'll, go, the you know, the hoops they'll jump through to get their kids in these prestigious schools. There's nothing wrong with a state school, all right? That's you true. can you, but get also, into the school that you go to. if you've never been in a boat before, and you're out in the middle of a park in a canoe <laughs> for a photo shoot. You knew what was going on, Junior. Exactly. You knew. Yeah, you know who didn't do a photo shoot to get into college? Everyone else. Those Junior. daughters might have known. Yeah. yeah. So, come on. We'll see what happens. That actually is going to be the thing that so many people are going to be watching for in the coming weeks, the coming months. So we'll keep you posted. All right. We've covered a lot of ground. Ladies, thank you for helping us count down our top 10 moments of 2019. Yay. Lola Oganaike, Jessica Shaw, good to see you. I'm Andrew Belke. And I'm Jerry Parsons. On the 2020, everybody. Yay! Woo! Um,